Good afternoon, depending on what side of the pond you're on, and welcome to an extra special edition of Across the Pitch. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I'm joined by my co-host, Tony Robinson. And today we're very excited to welcome a man who's been a fixture on Accrington's back line this season, uh, already making over 28 starts, over 2,500 minutes played, uh, really just kind of anchoring that left side. Welcome to the show, Cameron Burgess. Thank you very much, guys. Good to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, Cameron. Uh, and when when we say that you're a well-traveled person, uh, we mean that in uh, the sense of miles, not in the number of clubs. Uh, and uh, that's something we wanted just to uh, to touch on because uh, this is some in some way I can relate to the travel because uh, you were born in Scotland and then I believe at the age is six, then you moved to Australia. Yeah, ten, ten years old I moved to Australia, it was, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, ten. Um yeah, sorry, that's right. You were 10 and you come back around, what, to 16? To, to... 16, yeah, that's correct, yeah. So you had some formative years in Australia. How did that uh, impact your, your life, your uh, football career? Um, life, first and foremost, uh, it was it was a, a big change, especially at that age, but um, one that I, like, it just, it went, it went, amazing really to be honest with you um, the lifestyle out in Australia is, is unbelievable um, met some great friends that I speak to every single day obviously I go back whenever I get a chance to and, and see them and uh, my family still live out there now so um, yeah it's good to get back when I get a chance and, and uh, obviously it wasn't really my decision to move but it was uh, something that I, would, I would never regret it's one of the best things that happened yeah I think uh, I mean I was 14 when I came to Canada from Accrington and it's a decision that your parents make uh, and I'm glad they did because uh, I feel the same way as that Canada is a, a great country and um, I'm fortunate to uh, have lived here so long. This is the thing that people when they ask me they'll say well where you're from and I say from England so uh, I tell them I'm uh, British and yet when I'm in England they, uh, I tell them I'm basically Canadian so do you ever do you, do you ever run into that sort of a situation? More so when they hear my accent, it just depends on where I am, um, sort of thing. But yeah, it's, I just I just sort of turn around and say, long story, and I leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is because I emigrated three times and uh, and uh, back and forth across the ocean three years in a row. So I just tell people that I was sixteen when I came to Canada, and it's a lot easier to to, to do that. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I find myself obviously uh, my family and everybody uh, lives here that I, uh, my Canadian accent comes through. But when I get back to Accrington and in, in, in the area, and especially a couple of pints, you seem to pick the lingo back up because it is a, it is a unique uh, accent in around that area, isn't it? That's it, yeah. I think uh, mine's a little bit similar whenever I go uh, back up to Scotland to see family up there. And, and when I go um, across to Australia to see friends and family over there, it's, it's kind of similar. You, you, you're not there for two minutes before you start... Uh, Using a few slang words and then off you go, really. Yeah, yeah, and it sort of uh, you 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 become a, a citizen of the world because your accent really sort of uh, starts to come and go and blend. And That's my it. wife my wife says that the English comes out of me when I get mad, but uh, I, I which I, <laughs> does, doesn't happen too often, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just I wanted to ask too. Obviously, you said your father lives, your family lives over in Australia. Do you get a chance to uh, to to speak to him after a match, uh, uh, and what's the time difference for him? Yeah, at, uh, at the moment, I think it's uh, they're in, they're in Perth, so I think the the time difference is somewhere around about eight hours or something like that. It always depends on daylight saving. I get confused, so yeah. Um, but it's some somewhere around about that. But my my old man, uh, he watches pretty much every game on the, the iFollow. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what you guys watch it. Yep. Watch the yes. game. Yeah. But he, yeah, he subscribes to that and he watches all the games on that. So he's pretty similar to yourselves, obviously different time of the day when he watches it, but he, um, he's usually up at, um, the I'm crack glad of dawn to watch the games. 
I, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, what a pain uh, daylight savings is because uh, I'll, I'll tell you an interesting thing here. So I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, where we actually don't go on daylight savings. Now, Tony, I know that, that you're right now, you're two hours ahead of me, uh, and you're going to change your clock this Sunday and go three hours ahead of me. And now right now, the UK is seven hours ahead of me. And then on, uh, I believe it's March 30th is going to go eight hours ahead of me. And I got to keep track of all of these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't do that. This is the same in, in Australia. Don't do like daylight saving that there. They, I think they tried it for, for maybe a year or two, but they just worked out that it wasn't, wasn't uh, much difference because obviously you'll probably have the same in, in, in Arizona, the, the difference between winter and summer with the, the times the sun comes up and goes down doesn't really change too much, so it wasn't really worth doing. Whereas, obviously, um, in in Canada and obviously over here in the UK, it's a little bit different. It, it makes the world a difference having that extra hour of sunlight. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when we're talking about eye follow too, and you said your dad watches. After a match, is is he your um, best supporter or your best uh, or your worst critic? Oh, definitely worst critic. <laughs> Definitely worse, Craig. He, he always has been that way, but uh, it's it's tough love, and that's it's always been like that way. And, and I probably wouldn't be where I'm at just now if it wasn't for that. You know, uh, he obviously had experience playing professional football as well, and, and in the same position as me. So um, yeah, I'd say definitely definitely worse, Craig. Um, and there's always there's always a text message as soon as I've uh, come off the pitch uh, after the manager finishes talking. Now I'll, I'll usually check my phone, and there'll be be a message from dad straight away so um but yeah it's it's good to see and and obviously like i said i, I probably wouldn't be where i'm at if it wasn't for that so i'm i'm grateful for it well and, and like we should mention that your dad uh, obviously was a professional footballer played lots of uh uh games and league matches up in in scotland and your your grandfather had four international uh games with scotland and uh uh, uh, belated uh, condolences for on on your grandfather passing last November, uh, but you. that must that must have been uh, uh, tough on you. And and as a player, you've that sort of um, you've got to mentally get on with uh, uh, with uh, your match, and you've got to sort of play through that kind of uh, situation, haven't you, Cameron? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, like like I said, like I, I go back to, to my my dad being uh, sometimes my harshest critic. Um, my 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 grandpa was probably uh, the other side of that. He was the flip side of that. He was always the positive one. Um, obviously, not just about football, um, this uh, general things in life. But um, no, he was he was he was number one supporter. That's for sure. Um, and it was always good to to hear what he had to say about games as well. Um, he didn't have the the techno technology sort of capabilities that uh, my, my old man had, so he didn't get a chance to watch many of the games. But uh, when he was a little bit fitter a few years before that, he managed to to get down to to England to watch me play a few times, which um, I'm grateful for. Yeah, that's that's great. And this leads in. Uh, we have a question from our other co-host that uh, uh, basically Accrington Stanley sorry, and, and he he mentioned about your your grandfather uh, Darren, Darren's corner, right? Yeah, Darren's corner. Yeah. No, no, we we need we we already have Peter's corner, so we we need to think of of something else. Uh, uh, yeah, it's for for Darren. It should be like like Darren's yellow card or something like well, that. Well, we, we're gonna we we we've got more corners than a boxing ring, so we're gonna have to come up with some new names, Bill. But then again, we, <laughs> we're we're a very very thin staff, and uh, so we'll have to go to our R and D department. Um, <laughs> but it, but uh, Darren said with your grandfather being uh, uh, played for Scotland, and uh, uh, your dad is in Australia. Uh, is it an ambition at all for you to play for Scotland or are you committed with your international career uh, to, to Australia? Well, I've played, I've played for, for both uh, um, sort of underage groups. I uh, started off with Scotland at uh, under 19, I believe it was, and then went to Australia for under 20s and under 23s. Um, so, I mean, like I, I have sort of, um, and affinity to both to both countries, so um, I would never close the door on, on either of them. It would be a, an absolute honour to play for, for either one of those. Um, I'm in the sort of 
I suppose you could say lucky position that you can choose more than one country, but obviously if uh, if if I was lucky enough to have them both come calling at the same time, it'd be a, it'd be a tough decision, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I can I can understand that. Uh, um, this is uh, another question from Darren. We might as well get it in because it, it's regarding your time in Australia. Uh, Derek's a, a, a big cricket fan too, and uh, he he asked during your time in Australia, would you or did you get a chance to play uh, cricket and and uh, Australian rules football? <laughs> I think, uh, strangely enough, those two are probably at the bottom of my list for all the sports <laughs> I, I managed to play in Australia. Um, obviously, I, I've, I've cricket's obviously a, a massive sport, but it's never something I really took to. To be honest with you, uh, a lot of the boys in the in the team are, are better placed to uh, to talk about cricket than I am. Um, so, I mean, I like to keep an eye on the Ashes now and again because it's a good bit of banter with the boys at the club. Um, but in terms of Aussie rules, it's it's a crazy old sport, um, <laughs> much like you guys having your NFL over there. A um, lot of big hits and. And uh, and hard guys playing that sport, but uh, I've been to f- see a few games. But I'd say aside from obviously playing football, uh, I grew up playing uh, tennis and basketball. Really over there, uh, there was were my more cho- chosen two as substitutes, I suppose. And uh, now the uh, the the sport that uh, so one one of the founders of this show, uh, Aaron Ayers, he he's actually Australian, and, and we have. Uh, quite a few Australian listeners uh, uh, that, that do, due to him being on the show. And what I've kind of found is that actually it seems that, that rugby is preferred over Australian rules football in, in Australia. I think that sort of depends where, where you are. To yeah. be honest. You'll, have to, you'll have to find out from uh, the guys that, you, that you've got involved uh, whereabouts they are. On the West Coast where we are, it's definitely more Aussie rules because um, I don't think the the we're, we're we're the best to set the rugby on our side. There's I think there's maybe only only one team the Western Force, but I couldn't even tell you if it's uh, league or union to be honest with you. Because again, rugby is not a sport that I'm particularly take notice in. Um, but I know over the East Coast um, there's some big teams over there, and they get a big following. So yeah, I'd probably say maybe more so in the. Um, the northeast of Australia and uh, in in the sort of Sydney, Queensland, and and uh, New South Wales, they're very big on on the rugby uh, okay, over yeah, the west coast it's between the two. It's usually on the rules. And, it's, it's and, uh, yeah, you mentioned basketball. I'm just going to guess. Are you a Brooklyn Nets fan? I certainly am. Uh, it's got the Brooklyn Nets, and uh, they've got a great chance at winning the um, the championship this year. Now that they've signed just about everyone they possibly can. Yeah, there you go. I, uh, I I did see you wearing a Brooklyn Nets hat, so I kind of thought you uh, 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 might be a fan of the team. Uh, we have one a good team here in Toronto called the Raptors. So, but they're not doing yeah. such, such a great season this year. But uh, uh, they've done well. They won the the first team to win a world, or, uh, not a World Series. What's the any winning the championship outside of the state? So that's uh, that's a nice thing. Um, just yeah, want to touch. Hey, the game. Phoenix was, uh, Suns are finally one, after ten years. They're the Phoenix Suns are headed to the playoffs this year. I, I've just got to say. Yeah, they got they got a good team this year as well. Actually, it's been uh, been quite a turnaround for some teams in the last couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a lifelong Suns fan. My my first sports experience was attending a Suns game when I was in second grade. And yeah, I've just been a lifelong sports fan ever since. And it, it's been a rough 10 years because really since, since Steve Nash left the, the Suns, I uh, haven't been, you know, I think they finished dead last in the league about five times and Can they, they it, don't it, have that Jay-Z money coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian Steve Nash too, by the way, Phil. Hey, he's a yeah, Spurs true. fan though, so we won't talk about him. No, no. I mean, I just, uh, on, uh, there's another Canadian just bought into uh, the Wrexham Football Club, um, Ryan Ryan Gosling, I believe, just bought him uh, into uh, owns that non-league outfit in uh, in Wales. So we're um, we I guess we're spreading our money around the uh, the Canadians. They are they got the money to spend, not me. But um, can, <laughs> can we just go back to some of your earlier days um, when you uh, when you came back, you went you signed with Fulham. Um, that's got to be for at your age then when you come back. That had to be a big deal for you. 
Um, you, it, it's it sort of all came quite fast, to be honest. Um, I remember coming across for some some trials at a couple of teams, and and I loved every minute of them, and they they happened to offer me a, a contract, so. Um, it was, I think that was around about the March or April time. And then it was basically to go back and, and start from, um, it would have been July, um, start of July. So I didn't have much time to really think about it, to be honest with you. Um, it all came around quite quick and I, I don't regret one bit of it because it, for, for us, it was, I was kind of fortunate, but a lot of the guys who were my age group, um, they were all from different parts of the world. So we weren't like in a situation where you might be the only foreign guy where everyone's going home to their mum and dad and things and you're just kind of stuck, um, you know, like homesick and things like that. Whereas we had a group of seven or eight guys who were all from different parts of the world and we all just uh, hung out together every day doing different things and, and loved every minute of it. So... Yeah, it was it was tough leaving home, but it, it, I didn't really have it um, as rough as some other some other guys at other teams because we we formed quite a close knit uh, group and we were always doing different things to sort of uh, keep occupied. And you did uh, uh, while at Fulham, you got into four matches with them, and uh, and you, I know you made a comment that it was a thrill to play play alongside uh, Scott Parker. Uh, you know, back in uh, when he was in his playing his his a day. Uh, that must have been a bit uh, quite a thrill for you. Yeah, it's 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 only in sort of when you look back at it, you realise how how big of a deal that actually was. You know, um, at the time, you just sort of as a young guy, you take it in your stride and you you give it your best shot while you're there. But when you when you sort of reflect on these things, you think, wow, it's quite quite a special thing to do. You know. And and that, uh, when you're signed for a club like Fulham and a lot of the bigger clubs, loan, loan spells seem to be uh, play a big part in in a player's career, and that's no different for for you. Uh, with going to Ross County, you played for Cheltenham in the National League uh, during their winning season, Oldham Athletic and Barry. Um, so you've uh, you've had some spells um, there, and also. We sh- we can't forget uh, uh, Salford in nineteen uh, to nineteen twenty season. Um, how does a, a loan spell uh, uh, make you a better person and a better player? Yeah, it's, it's you've, you've just basically hit the nail on the head. It does. It's it's all about sort of one half uh, making you a better person with your sort of life experiences, going and uh, experiencing some challenging sort of circumstances. You you're going and you're living by yourself again. Your new team. Um, leaving comfort zones, things like that, and and you you grow up quite quick. Um, and then on the other hand, you you experience um, playing with different players, against different players in different leagues, and and uh, different abilities and things like that. So it's like you're just you're on your toes all the time, learning different things, um, just trying to trying to make yourself a better person and better player, like like you say, and and that's how you progress, really. <laughs> We asked Nathan Baxter this, and his answer kind of surprised me. But what has worse weather, Ross County or Accrington? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, believe it or not, Accrington. Um, I think I, I don't know if he said the same thing, but I, 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 I'm, I'm convinced Accrington is the coolest place on earth. Honestly, uh, I, I grew up in Aberdeen. I've played, I've played in Ross County. It's um, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't seem to, it didn't really seem to rain as much up there. Um, and it gets cold, but I, I don't know what it is, but when you drive into Accrington, it just, the temperature drops at least five degrees Celsius. That's for sure. It uh, it's a, it gets into your body. It's a cold. I mean, I could be outside yeah. in, uh, um, in tw- minus 20 degrees in Canada. And I'll tell you, I'd rather take that than some of those damp uh, Tuesday nights in uh, at the Wham Stadium because, uh, yeah. man, I, I, Phil, you got to. It, it is I, when when they say that it's kind of crazy, but it is uh, it is damn well, I, cold. I believe that because I mean, here in Phoenix, Arizona, it'll be uh, you know a hundred and ten degrees Fahrenheit at, at seven p.m. and we'll we'll be out in the stands drinking beer and and when I was back in Pittsburgh and it was like. 90 degrees with 90 percent humidity i i'd take the 110 degrees fahrenheit here over that anytime yeah it's strange how it works but i just i I don't know what it is i don't know i don't know how to explain it but i haven't got used to it yet we're all uh 
we're all slowly putting more layers on and it's supposed to be getting warmer and then all of a sudden the sun comes out and you just you don't know what to do really uh well, we were just talking about when your your career in, in Salford and then right at the beginning of August uh, I I believe uh and Phil would probably correct me if I'm wrong but you were the first uh, signing in the in the summer transfer window by John Coleman um he he was uh, went right after you he wanted you uh to come to Stanley uh um how does yeah, that I actually happen? remember uh, the, that John said that, that you were the the first player on uh, on the list. I think Andy had told him, uh, you know, you could sign one guy on the first day, and, and you were that name on his list. Yeah, it was. That's uh, good to hear. I suppose. Um, hopefully, I'm doing all right for the first person on the list. But uh, no, it, it came about fairly quickly. Obviously, it was it was a it was a weird time with with the COVID and things like that, and we didn't know. Uh, when things were going to get going, um, there was a lot of different things with with um, different clubs at the time about uh, going on furlough because you weren't training, and there was all these different um, all these different things going on really. And uh, when it came about, obviously I went to to meet um, the manager um, while while we still could um, travel and and different things like that. But we 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 met up and we had a good chat, and uh, it was at a point in my life and career where I just wanted to I don't know maybe a little bit in, enjoy my football again I, not that I would ever not enjoy playing football for a living that's that's not what I'm trying to say but it was just I just maybe a change of environment um, and and what I needed f- for myself personally it just it just fit like a glove really the, and it was it was a great chance for me to go and kick on and, and that's uh, that's how it came about really it didn't really take too long to sort out it was just more um, the world we were living in at the time with the COVID and stuff like that and how things were going to get would get done that way. But in terms of uh, making the decision to come here, it was uh, as soon as I met the manager, it was a no-brainer, really. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the gaffer has four promotions for a reason, and uh, you know, he certainly uh, you know, knows how to, to pick talent. And, uh, you know, you, you really have been the guy that uh, kind of came in and, and just helped solidify the back line from, from day one. And, and we want to talk some about uh, Accrington, of course, and, and we're going to do that on the second half of the show. But as I mentioned to you before we get started, uh, Tony does have some fun questions that, that we do. And this has actually become, I think, the most popular segment on our show. So, uh, uh, Tony, I'm going to turn it over to you for the now world famous Rapid Fire. <laughs> You you really do build it up, Phil, and it's always a letdown when I come out with the questions. We're going to have to tone down your introduction. <laughs> uh, okay, th- this is this might uh, this some of these are sort of uh, to see how well you've settled into the Lancashire uh, area. Um, first of all, we're going to go on with our uh, tested uh, uh, question: uh, much of your garden peas, uh, mushy peas. Uh, red or brown sauce on your bacon sandwich? No, always brown sauce. If you were to have a full English, would you have black pudding with it? Of course. And I, I take it you uh, you like uh, haggis as well, right? Um, I'd rather black pudding, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I agree. I tried haggis, but I do like black pudding myself. Um, do you have a favorite band? A favorite band? Yeah. Oh, um, tough one. I'll go, I'll go with the Killers. Oh, yep. I, I, yes, I, my I, favorite I, band. <laughs> yeah. hey, well, I've heard of that band, so we're on a good we're on a roll here. The last what's three guys. Favorite, been, what's uh, your favorite Killer song? Oh, um, so tough, everyone. Maybe maybe Miss, Mr. Brightside, maybe. Mr. Brightside, it's just, it's a classic. It's their first song. Uh, it's it's actually, do you know that, that it's got the record for the most consecutive weeks in the British top 200? Like, it's still in the top 200. Yeah, well, I didn't know that, but I'm not surprised by it, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's a feel-good song, and you can't go wrong with it. Well, yeah. what's, your, what's your favorite? Give, give me your favorite deep cut. Well, I, I don't honestly. It's a tough one. 
What about you? What's yours? Sam's Town. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that yeah. Whole album, I, I would probably go along with that. That whole album is underrated, and especially um, uh, if you if you listen to the version of uh, Sam's Town, it's live at Royal Albert Hall off that album. It's just that that's an essential uh, right there. Uh, sorry, Phil. Yeah, I'll, your- I'll maybe go along with that. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to interrupt the music review show uh, for the portion of the cross of pitch, but we'll get back to some some uh, some questions. I'm sorry, here. <laughs> I get excited about the killers. I, I've seen them well, live. I finally, I, I finally recognize the band that uh, that they the players mentioned. So that's uh, that's great. Um, <laughs> who has the uh, who has the best sense of humor on the team? Uh, it's a, there's a few good ones to be fair. I'll give it to uh, Harvey Rogers. Okay, uh, and we've cast this one out, Phil. The uh, who, who spends the most time in the mirror because uh, Joe Pritchard has been a clear runaway winner on that one. So I'm yeah, gonna. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, this is from uh, Darren. He wanted me to throw this one in. Um, after a match, if you were to have a drink, would you prefer Aki Ale or Foster's? I already know the answer to this too. I've never had Aki Ale, so I, I wouldn't know to be honest. I'll have to. I'll have to try it, and uh, and I'll get back to you on that one. Well, it's I tell you, uh, Boland Breweries is one of the best in the area, and, and uh, it's I love that Akiel, so I I I certainly recommend uh, trying it. But okay, um, I was going to say that that I was I was going to guess you're going to say Aki Ale because I I know that Foster's is a beer that's not really drank in Australia. It's more of yeah, the it's strange, American yeah, I'm Australia. Say that. Yeah, everywhere else in the world drinks it except for the Aussies for some reason. Well, it's yeah. like Corona, because so so here in Phoenix, uh, you know, we're only a few hundred miles from Mexico, and everybody thinks Corona is a Mexican beer. But if you drive across the border, everybody's drinking like Sol Dos Equis. Nobody drinks Corona in Mexico. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, it's it's strange. Whereas everywhere you go in Asia, um, it's always the local beers everyone drinks. So it's a strange one that. Yeah, and over here, I think I, Labatt's is a big brewery, but I, I think more people drink Labatt's over overseas than they do uh, do in uh, in Canada. Bolts uh, is a big beer that they actually drink in Canada, right? Oh, well, you know what? The bit is is the American beers, uh, Coors Light and, and Bud Light are sort of big ones over here. Really, to be honest with you. What What about this one, Vegemite or Marmite? Neither. Yeah, I'm going to say neither. Absolutely neither. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can can. That's never going to be asked again in my uh, uh, rapid fire, Phil. Uh, that, that that was Ross's question uh, last time. So uh, I just throw that in. Speaking of food, what's your favorite takeaway? Oh, um, it's a tough one. I'll, I'll maybe go just a standard pizza, to be honest. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, I I can chop and change. I, I can like I, I like most things to be honest, but I'd maybe go a standard pizza or something. Like that. Maybe uh, either that or something like uh, I don't know if you guys have like well over here we have Wagamama's. It's like an Asian fusion type type food. Maybe something like that. Maybe some okay. sushi or something would be good. Okay, well you you you've got a variety there, so you're not obviously never stuck for a choice. Um, yeah, that's it. it. This is a question, sort of. We throw at some at the just to see who they uh, who their heroes are. Uh, living or dead? It, can you name two people that you would be really, really want to sit down and and have dinner with? Uh, oh, um, I'll go with I'll go with a, a Michael Jordan and a Carlos Puyo. There you go. That's 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 a good uh, answer, Phil. Yeah, and I, I I guess that we need to bring back the uh, the question about uh, which do you prefer, The Last Dance or Sutherland Till I Die on Netflix? Yep. Oh, it's got it's got it's got to be the last time, hasn't it? <laughs> I had a feeling when he said Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This one is this one I've never asked before, but uh, so we'll see what uh, what we get. Who has the most tattoos uh, on the team? Oh, it might be me. You know, um, not that you would see it much when when I'm playing. Um, but you got them on your arm, right? 
Yeah, both both arms and uh, and my chest as well, um, and a couple of little ones dotted around. But it might be me. I'm not sure. I think um, I'm usually uh, there's a couple of lads in the team with a full arm sleeve, but uh, it's it's become that normal that you don't really you sort of you don't really take notice of it. Um, but it, it could be me. It probably could be me. Who's this, who would be second? I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I'm not really okay. sure to be honest. Okay. I can't okay. remember who's actually. It's not something I've taken notice of. Uh, yeah. There's not many lads with them. That's for sure. Um, but I'd say it, it could be me. I don't know whether it's because I've uh, not really had much sunshine, so it maybe stands out on me a little bit more. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is going back to the the back three that will lead into the rest of the show. Phil is uh, uh, who's taller, you, Ross Sykes, or uh, uh, Michael Nottingham? I think I think I'm in the middle. I'm sure it's Ross that's that's tallest. Um, if if not to get his haircut, then he will be only about five foot ten. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 good one. Yeah. Um, uh, on the last one for me, Phil. Uh, any? Do you have any suspicious uh, or superstitions? I should say before a match. Um, not, not particularly. I, I'd like to be in a good little routine in terms of, um, making sure I've eaten the right stuff. Um, prepare as in, um, I know what, who we're playing against and who I'm playing against and, and be prepared for the game in terms of that way. But there's not really a set order to things for me, or I have to eat this or I have to eat that. Maybe the only thing I could think of is if I remember and we've won the last game, I'll try and wear the same pair of trainers to the game. That's yeah. probably about the only thing I can think of, but uh, not there's not anything really that that I can that I do. Maybe maybe I did a little a few things when I was a bit younger, but I've uh, I think I've grown out of them by now. When I was uh, coaching hockey, uh, and if we lost, I would uh, clean my trainers. I wore white trainers, and I'd clean them and sort of try and get rid of the bad luck. And if we won, I wouldn't clean them. And that was one of my uh, little things that I pet things I had before a, before a, a match and or a game. Um, anyway, you know, Phil, speaking that- of uh, superstitions, or uh, I don't know if it's really a superstition, but I've been trying to get uh, a song started where there there would be a song that uh, Accrington Stanley would sing after every victory, and I was thinking that Mister Brightside should be that song that you guys <laughs> yeah, should sing. All right, so I I, I think uh, I'm going to pitch that one to the gaffer that, that you guys sing uh, Mister Brightside uh, in the uh, in the changing room after every victory. I I think that that there, should there be has good. been there has been a couple of songs that uh, have gone on before a game that. Uh, the gaffer or Jimmy have picked up on, and if we've won, they've made sure it's been played the next game. Um, but with uh, it's 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 Yozza that does the the songs before the game usually, and and Mr. Brightside would definitely be on his playlist um, with the with the genre and music he puts on. So I'm sure it could be arranged. Good to know. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, okay, well, Phil. Back to to football, and, and one of my main focuses is stats and. Uh, yeah, you know, when I started looking at your stat sheet, one of the things that, that's most impressive is that, uh, you know, you're on the back line, but, but you're really just, uh, you know, like Michael Jordan, you're filling up the stat sheet on offense and defense. Uh, you got 49 interceptions, 51 tackles, one on the, uh, the defensive end. But then I see you've also drawn 23 fouls. Most impressively, you've hit 60 crosses into the box. So, I mean, is that really your focus is being a, a two-way threat, if you will? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, I like to to think that I can, uh, when we get into the opposition half, maybe try and try and contribute a little bit. Um, I don't know how many of those sixty crosses will be accurate, right enough, but um, I certainly, I certainly give it a good go. Um, and obviously, playing the the way we've been playing this season, I've played uh, a few different positions, but uh, it's probably find myself in the opposition's half a bit more than than maybe in previous seasons, which is. Uh, been quite enjoyable and it's worked quite well for us not not particularly just me but um the way we, the formation and things we've been playing so uh long may it continue and, and hopefully we can um we can finish the season strong with that so do you like playing in the center or on the left side better 
Uh, if we're playing the back three, I quite like the, the left side where I've been playing um, a little bit better. Um, I don't know. I, I just I just feel a bit more, I don't know, not so much comfortable. I've played both um, and I'm, I'm happy playing both, but I, I just feel more natural, I suppose, on the left side. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been a little while since I've played the middle of the three. Maybe it's going back to when I first signed for, for Scunthorpe, I think. Uh, and maybe I, maybe once or twice for, for Salford last season. But um, definitely this season, I've enjoyed playing on the left side. Well, there seems to be, uh, uh, with injuries and that, there seems to have been a uh, more of a turnover in the midfield. Uh, and, and there seems to be, a, a, I guess you could say, more consistency in the backward that you've been with uh, Mark Hughes and uh, with uh, My- Michael Nottingham playing in, in the back. Uh, you're, you're building a, a, a quite a relationship with those guys. Uh, I, I mean, you've got uh, Mark Hughes that's probably playing his best football as, once he arrived in Accrington, and Michael Nottingham just seemed to have fit right fit fit right in. So it's got to be a, a good feeling when you're playing with players like that beside you. Yeah, definitely. The the confidence sort of grows from there, really. Um, we've had it uh, for, for most of the season up to obviously maybe. Maybe a few recent games where things haven't really gone our way, but um, in the main, for the whole season, it's been uh, that sort of confidence is is dripped through the team and and starting with us us three and and obviously the guys who've come in and at different times. Uh, Ross has obviously played a fair few while he's not been injured, and, and Ben's played recently. Harvey, guys like that. Yeah. Um, the sort of the form seems to have carried on. You know, it's like everyone feeds off each other and. And that goes um, comes from training, sort of thing. You know, we 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 train hard and and do the right things on the training field, and and that sort of uh, leads to that little bit of confidence we have going to to the pitch on a Saturday and Tuesday night. Well, we should give credit to, uh, as you mentioned, Barkley and and Rogers because the times they've come in, uh, they've really. Uh, uh, done their job and uh, raised their game too, and uh, and I guess that's got to have some credit to the players that are playing alongside with, like yourself and the other two gentlemen I mentioned. Because uh, I think Mark Hughes is probably the one you may peg to be a, a future manager, and, and he seems to be able to have that on the pitch too, that sort of uh, ability to di- direct. I guess. Yeah, you you notice that a lot when we do our sort of video analysis and things like that. He. He has, he knows the right things to say, and and he and he looks at the game a little bit differently at times, uh, which is probably good for them from the position he's playing in uh, in that middle of the back three. Um, it sort of gives him a good chance to uh, analyze the game while he's playing it, and also, like you said, from a, with his manager's head on, if you like, when we when we're doing our analysis and on the training pitch, he he often pitches in with some some good thoughts and some uh, good advice to to different players at different times. So, yeah, that seems to work for him. You know, we, we kind of like to, to turn a, a look a little bit at, at current form. And, uh, you know, of course, this has maybe been the, the roughest patch of the season for you guys right now, looking back, uh, only five points in the past six matches. But the, the thing that really jumps out to me, and you mentioned uh, going to the park on a Saturday or, or a Tuesday, uh, in those six matches that you've played have all been Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, which actually works out to six games in 17 days. And I know that, that you guys, you know, you've got a deep squad and you're not going to make excuses, but is playing that many games in that few few days, is that taking a toll at this point? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the thing is with it is, Every team is the same uh, at this point, which, which would I probably say it maybe disadvantages us a little bit because of the fact that we, as you guys have seen, we play quite a high tempo uh, on and off the ball, you know. Um, so it is, it is when when there's fatigue on on both sides, um, which is which is pretty normal, you know, playing that many games when there's when there's a bit of fatigue in our team and other teams, we maybe suffer a little bit more because of the way we like to play. Um, but like you said, there, there is no excuses. Uh, everyone is in the same boat and, and it just comes down to if you can sort of pick up a couple of wins here and there, um, I'm sure everyone listening will, will know exactly what it's like. When, when you're winning games and, and that feel good factor is there, you don't feel tired. So yeah. um, and we just need to find a way to, 
to get get those points on the board because we've not particularly played too bad um, in, in a lot of those in a lot of those games, uh, especially when we look back at it as a, as a team. Um, there's a lot of good points. We just need to, um, I suppose, maybe not so much tired bodies, but maybe tired minds at time. If we can, if we can sort of uh, shore up a little bit of the mistakes maybe or or just uh, just find a way to win in a couple of games uh, that will turn around and no one will be feeling tired at all so we can't yeah, make excuses but, but yeah, it, really it, you, are, you are right it's an unusual season it is an unusual season and, and we just have to deal with that the best we can and, and, and hopefully we can turn things around I think sometimes when you are uh, mentally uh, tired. Uh, sometimes that leads to the wrong uh, decision being made, and and that's something I guess that you work on in training because uh, you know making the decision that's uh, quick and and making the right decision. How how do you um, after uh, uh, the Tuesday night match? Um, h- how do you bounce back yourself? Um, do you go over the match or do you just cl- a clean slate and then get ready for the next opponent, or is it a combination? Uh, a little bit of both. I think. I think uh, we 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 looked at it as a team. Uh, we looked at the game. We watched it back. Um, we touched on some things and things that have to be said. And uh, the good thing about the the manager and obviously all the rest of the coaching staff is it's it's uh, it's a free room to to speak up. So um, like like we said, like I said before about um, Yoza being someone who uh, has an opinion to share that. Um, you know, other people might pick up on and, and and use it to learn from things. Um, I like to to sh- to pitch him with some some things as well now and again. So uh, it's a good opportunity for us to uh, maybe sometimes get things off our chest that we might be thinking ourselves. Uh, listen to what the the coaching staff have to say. Uh, watch it back and and maybe a chance to to hear what people are thinking um, in certain situations and what they were. Why they made certain decisions and, and how we can fix things. So it is it is a good sort of learning environment on that sort of point, and and you use that to go into the next game and focus on the next game. So like as I said, we you can't you can't control what's already happened, but you can you can use it as a tool to sort of control the next thing that's that's going to happen, and that is the next game. The uh, if you look at the table, there's a really a dogfight for that. Well, if you it could be the fifth and sixth positions in the playoffs, but if you look from Portsmouth down, uh, I think there's four points separating uh, uh, seven teams, and uh, uh, it's as a team you, you you feel that the playoffs is a is a achievable goal for for this squad. Yeah, look, it, it was achievable. Before we kicked the ball this season, it's it was achievable 10, 20, 10, 20 games in, you know, and it's still achievable now. Um, like you said, the the games are are coming thick and fast, and some teams are are going through some good spells, and some teams are are not going through some good spells, and and we just have to make sure that we can we can be one of the teams that can finish. Two- <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 definitely achievable. It's 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 more than achievable. It's. Uh, it's something that um, we we talk about a lot, and and uh, probably at this point expect of ourselves to to try and get there. Obviously, we know that it's it's a big challenge, and and uh, before coming here myself, I'm, I'm sure a lot of a lot of um, Accrington fans would have taken the position we're in right now if if you were to look at it across the board um, at this point of the season. It's it's an incredible achievement to be where we are, but um, on on the other side of that is is we know how good we are as a team. Uh, as a group of lads, and I'm sure the, f- the fans and you guys have, you've all seen it how good we can be. So it's it's just about uh, getting back to that and and just seeing where it takes us. Really, it's it's uh, it's it's a goal at the end of the day, and and all we can do is give it our best and see if we can reach it. Like you said, uh, I think that, that as uh, supporters, we've really seen what this team can be in a sense that it doesn't matter who you're playing against. It's something that, that Tony has actually mentioned a lot is that uh, you guys, you, you really seem to bring out your best stuff against the top teams and, and kind of looking at the schedule at the next six matches now. Now, first off, they, they come up as quickly as the 
the last six. I mean, you guys are just getting no breaks in the schedule. But no. <laughs> realistically, from a, a supporter standpoint, what I see here uh, is I see three matches that that I feel like are are ones that I would expect you guys to get three points out of, uh, and uh, you know, three matches that are, are going to be real tough and, and are going to be teams that are battling for playoff position against you. When you look at the schedule, do you look at it that way, or do you just kind of look at every game the same, or do you look at like um, MK Dons? We need to get points out of this game because they're a team that's well below us to the table, type of thing. Um, me personally, I'm I'm I can be a bit emotional like that, uh, and 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 get. I wouldn't say it affects me or. or, or or anything like that, but I can like in previous times when when the when the winds are rolling in, you're looking ahead. Who have we got coming up? All these sorts of things. But when it's when it's been a little bit tough, I like to um, simplify it a little bit and and get away from like you like as far as I'm concerned, you can't control what's happening in two games time. All you can do is control what's going to happen and. Uh, in, in your own part in the next game, the very next game. So recently, I've just tried to. Um, not even really look at the fixtures, to be honest with you, and just and just make sure I know who the next game is once the last game's finished, and and who the threats are that could well who the threats are to, to me particularly, and and how I can sort of affect the game. Really, that's that's all I can sort of control at this point in time. So I don't see it at this point in time of the season when it's come to crunch time. Why look any further? Um, I'll, I'll leave that up to the the other guys. Well, I think one of the things that when you the start the season starts is that uh, the so-called experts, the pundits, always seem to pick Accrington uh, in for a, a relegation uh, battle, and I don't, you know, know if they, if they really give the uh, respect that, that Stanley deserves, not only from a player point of view, but from the management and coaching staff. Uh, you know, I think uh, fans, Stanley fans. Once they see the team play, yeah, there's, there's something about this team. They can, uh, they have a chance to do something special, and that's what. I, uh, and from our point of view, watching it from afar, we feel that way. And I know a lot of uh, local fans feel that this is a team that can achieve something. Everything goes, every team goes through some um, uh, a down spell, and uh, uh, you're st- you're 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 knocking on the door, and everybody would want that at this point in the season. And uh, as as we like to uh, talk when we when we talk to our players is uh, we want to wish you personal uh, continued success but also for the team and for me it's been a pleasure chatting with somebody that somebody else that's traveled around the world to uh, as a child to uh, with your parents and uh, and it's been a lot of fun and you've been a great guest and uh, I just want to thank you for your time today no problem uh, thanks a lot guys I really enjoyed it um and keep up the good work. It's uh, I know all the all, all the lads. Obviously, I spoke to them before coming on, and and they enjoyed um, sort of speaking to you guys and, and how good it's been, and and um, just continue to support the boys, and and let's see where it takes us this season. Well, we we really appreciate it, and we're so glad to hear that uh, everyone's enjoyed coming on the show, and it's just been brilliant having you on today. And uh, as Tony's uh, catchphrase is "continued success," and that, that's what we're all about. Is uh, you know we not only are, are supportive of Accrington Stanley, but uh, of everybody that comes on the show. You know we're going to follow you throughout your career. Hopefully, it's with Stanley for a long time. But as you move on, we'll uh, we'll continue to follow your career and, and wish you success throughout. Uh, most importantly, uh, good luck at this uh, last, uh, I guess, about six and a half weeks until May 8th. Because, I mean, you just don't have uh, time to take a breather here. But uh, <laughs> at the, the end of May 8th, uh, let's see uh, Aki Stanley in the top six. And then uh, hopefully a uh, promotion party at Wembley. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, and we always like to finish up with an on Stanley on. So on three, one, two, three, on I'm Stanley, Stanley on. on. Yeah, cheers, Cameron. Cheers. No problem. Cheers, guys. And I. See-